So I'm delighted to be with uh, Jean-Luc Chrétien this morning at the Heidi Vaughan Fine Art Gallery in uh, Lake Street. It's a gallery in Houston. And currently I have my show, which is named uh, The Order of the Civilization. And in this show, so I'm, I'm going to introduce you uh, briefly to the show. So it's about the heterotopias, a concept developed uh, by Michel Foucault. And it talks about the other spaces. So in a society, for example, you have the other spaces, which are like a church, um, a school, with their particular rules. And for this show, I developed a, a painting, which is named uh, Star and Dust. And it talks about the star city. Because for me, it was a place and Jean-Louis is going to talk about it uh, much better than I do, but it was a, a place which was kept as a secret until 1961, and it's a kind of heterotopia because it's within the society, but with particular rules, because it's where you train cosmonauts and uh, uh, engineers, and it's remotely placed from uh, the other cities, and I was really interested by the concept of this place and also how you can envision with the conquest of space the digital space. Because when you go into space, nobody is with you, you are like uh, in your own bubble. So, the, the way we see uh, you is through digital networks, and it's how we envision your reality. So, but today it's going to be more physical because I have Jean-Louis and uh, I really want to ask him some questions about his experience uh, at the Star City and also in space and maybe you can introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your story. Good, <coughs> Good morning, I hope I keep my voice, that's a uh, pollution early pollution in Houston, spring pollution, and um, okay, it seems to work. I'm Jean Roux, um, French Air Force fighter pilot, who became a test pilot, later a cosmonaut in Star City. So that uh, was my first experience in uh, space after 20 years, almost 20 years, as uh, an officer of the Air Force. Uh, agreement with the French government and the Russian government to train two people from France to go to space. And I had my first flight in 1982. Uh, eight days uh, flight on board the Sagut space station with a couple uh, Russian customers. I had two years training in Star City, so a few words about Star City. I'm not sure it was secret until 1961, it's just that we did know that they were training future Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. The center poly was uh, none, but no one knew that there was a cosmonaut training to go to space. And um, Star City is like um, a small village. Uh, green, very pleasant at the time in the way of ecology, big lake in the middle, and uh, very few cars, people were walk walking from home to work and to the restaurant where we had uh, our meals. It was a place, that it, uh, I don't know now, it's probably <coughs> still a place where Traveling by car is not too often. And um, so two years there and um, one flight back to France. And uh, a couple of years uh, later, we came here to Houston for a second training and flight in space shuttle. I was performed by the guy who was my backup of the first training. And I was his uh, backup uh, here. So we met here with several astronauts, and that's where I met also with uh, my best uh, friend, George Abbey, who became kind of a brother. And uh, again, that was in 84, 85. At that time, 
no one here would believe that they also would fly in the Soyuz less than 10 years later. The US astronauts were here in the center when we talked about our flight and training in Star City. They were looking at us like zombies. They said, oh, yes, these guys have been there far east. And uh, that was in um, 1985. And in 1994, so less than uh, 10 years later, started the, the first um, cooperation between uh, NASA and the uh, Russian Space Agency and the exchange of cosmonauts and astronauts. And we started a new event going to Star City um, from here, from uh, Houston, with um, US astronauts and also astronauts from other country, Western uh, country. That was a great time of cooperation. So that was a new star city. Uh, NASA de decided to build the houses for the astronauts who spend uh, years of training there. That was a big change. And, uh, and again, less than 10, 10 years earlier, if I had told the Russians there, you know, in nine years, the Americans are going to build houses here, they would have looked at me, are you crazy? And uh, no, that's, uh, that has been a good part of the experience sharing time now and, and from then, from 1993, 94, sharing time and cooperation with the uh, two countries mainly and many other uh, countries. So I have to hear your experience and how, like the proximity in fact, like it was a small village, uh, you were like telling us that you were walking in the street, uh, we were quite close, in fact. It was a, a kind of symbiosis, I would say, like the, the life uh, at Star City. And what is your best memory there? How you can like tell us a, a very good memory and also what we can implement from this space, which was quite unique in a certain way, how we can implement this space current in our everyday life and for the space conquest, like for the future space conquest. What, which kind of, um, um, I would say, uh, advice you could tell the, the teams which are working for space conquest to, to do like in terms of uh, a human level? So the first, uh, <coughs> the first, the main comment, because you asked me what, what, what it's like you know, on the personal side, um, a fantastic lesson that we got there after a few days with uh, Patrick, who was my uh, backup, 1980. It was kind of a big family. And um, that small village, people, were working there, but also living there. And um, we have to remember it's a northern country, summer is short, winter is coming fast, the snow is coming fast, so you're not going to say, okay, I dropped my jacket at work, and now I go swimming, I go, uh, no, down there you have to go from one place, spend minimum time outside, and find another place. That other place was your home, all the home of your captain, of a friend. So it was like a big family. People were all living together at work and later in the evening, that was at the home of another guy who was 100 meters away, or uh, very close. So people were really living there all the time, 24 hours a day. From time to time going downtown to Moscow, that was not too easy, the road could be crazy with the snow and with the traffic jam. And I remember going to Moscow, um, spending an evening, going for dinner, meeting some friends at the embassy, coming back to Star City, going through the gate and see the trees with the snow. It was uh, like a dream, like, um, uh, how do you call that, a tale. Yes, almost uh, like a fairy tale. Fairy tale. Yeah. Fairy tale. Yeah. I was uh, 
always going back and looking at those beautiful trees, the snow, the snow going down, and people walking on the, on the snow, the fairy tale. And it was a, a great expense. Of course, two years there, training and uh, waiting to go and then go back, go back home. When I was uh, six months or a year or six months to the flight, we still think, okay, time to get over and <clears throat> go back home. And I remember the, the commander of Star City at that time uh, told me one day when I was going on vacation, happy to go on vacation after the first year, and he said, Jean-Louis, don't be too much in a hurry. Remember that I tell you now, the day you leave, you will say, okay, can I stay a little bit more? <laughs> and he was right. The day leaving, in July 1982, after the flight, I was, I told them in my last speech, I live here, I leave half of my heart here, and I will come back one day, take it off. Wow. And uh, that's what I did. After the training here, anticipating what could, would happen in 1994, that was 1985, so after the flight of Patrick, I mean, uh, <coughs> going back uh, to France, the first, uh, first thing I tried to organize, uh, new meetings, to try to find a seat to go back up, back to Star City. And in 1986, I moved back to uh, Star City for two more years, training on the second flight. So the thing I really like uh, is uh, the way you talk about the fact that you were a community like a family, which is really something we have the tendency to, to lose nowadays because we are on the digital scale. So we interact like we are uh, physically speaking not too far away because we live in cities, but on the level of interaction, most of the time it's digital. And that's why I wanted to, and I'm super honored to have you here, to have you tell us the experience because we, we have to remember the past and maybe we have to learn from it and to tell ourselves that maybe uh, on the, if we want to survive on the human scale, we need to, never to forget that we are a big family and we need to nurture both kind of uh, feelings and um, relationship because it's how you also develop things and it's how you conquest the future because also the future is really important we never we need to continue to look forward and i'm really really happy to for to have you here to tell us that and to remember that. So let's try to keep us as a big family. I hope you enjoy the talk. You can come to the gallery at any time. Uh, the show runs until April 3rd. And I'm welcome to introduce you to the paintings uh, with a private show if you want to, because uh, now it's uh, it's a difficult time uh, regarding the COVID. So um, don't hesitate to contact us. I hope you enjoyed the talk and see you very soon. Bye-bye.